2023 is flying and we're in July already. So what better time to look back at some of the watch highlights of the year so far. Let's get straight into it. Tissot has finally given enthusiasts what they wanted with a collection of automatic PRXs in the 35mm case size. The Paramatic 80 is a workhorse movement, nothing particularly special, just accurate and reliable. The PRX has been talked about to death though, so I don't have much more to add other than prices of PRXs are creeping up, so if you want one, I would pull the trigger sooner rather than later. I really hate Timex because it is a brand that has the uncanny ability to keep extracting money from my wallet. Timex watches are cheap with mediocre quality, but undeniable charm and I can't help but love the retro reissues the brand constantly pumps out. The recent collaboration with ex Hadinki editor and owner of kids watch brand Archie, Cara Barrett, is another triumph. It has all the classic features of a dress watch with its 36mm case size and domed acrylic crystal covering an eye-catching baby blue dial with Breguet numerals. The vintage style expansion band bracelet is the icing on the cake. The $249 price tag put me off buying one and it's now sold out but if Timex makes more or I can nab one for a really great price on the secondary market I will be sure to do so. The Tudor Black Bay 58 has been a stunning success for Tudor, but the brand caught everyone by surprise at Watches and Wonders 2023 with the 37mm Black Bay 54, a watch reminiscent of the very first Tudor Submariner, the Tudor Oyster Prince Submariner 7922. It's only slightly smaller than the Black Bay 58, but it's perfect for those of us with slimmer wrists. I really do like the Black Bay 54, it looks fantastic, but dare I say it's just a little bit boring. It's like a pair of black cap to Oxford shoes. They're classy and elegant and do the job really well, but sometimes we just want to wear something a bit more exciting. The solid gold Rolex GMT is one of the most disgustingly beautiful watches in the history of watchmaking, and Rolex brought it back on the Jubilee bracelet at Watches and Wonders 2023. The two-tone grey bezel isn't my favourite combination, but it's not a bad effort at all. I'm still hoping that gold will be cool again one day. I'll almost certainly never be able to afford one, but we can always dream, right? The Bull of a Lunar Pilot was released to much fanfare as an affordable alternative to the Omega Speedmaster Professional Moonwatch, but with actual provenance as a Bull of a Watch did make it to the moon albeit in an unofficial capacity. The only problem with this new release was the 45mm case size, which for most people was too large. Bulliver listened to its customers and released a slightly smaller version, including one in this blue and white colourway. Reminiscent of the Omega Speedmaster Snoopy, it looks magnificent, but at 43.5mm it's still too big for a lot of people. Not everyone is a fan of the precisionist quartz movement, but it does provide a satisfying sweep, if that's your thing. If Bulliver released a reduced version at 40mm or below, I'm sure it would be a massive hit. Baltic is a French micro brand which has steadily built a reputation for producing good quality watches with a vintage vibe. The Aquascaf harkens back to famous dive watches of the 1950s, but the MR01 is a blatant Patek Philippe homage. It comes in at a really nice size for a dress watch at 36mm. It has a grain dial with Breguet numerals and leaf hands. The highlight for me is the micro rotor movement though. They're just cool and I don't even know why. The only thing I don't really love is the bezel. It just seems a bit too thick for a dress watch. So there we have it. Let me know in the comments what you think. And here's to more great watches in 2023. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.